Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. So things have been pretty serious on here for a long time, so I think it's time we let off some steam. So today we're going to be looking at how to set up a game server. And that game server, you guessed it, it's going to be Minecraft. Now there's a few reasons why you might want to spin up your own game server, and it follows many of the reasons why you might want to self-host in the first place. So it's going to give you control over who has access to your server, and it's also going to let you retain your data on your infrastructure. So those are the obvious things. The reason that I do it is because I have children and it seems to be the flavor of the year at school. Everyone's playing Minecraft. Now, as a concerned parent, I don't want my kids playing on public servers where I don't have control over what they see. So being able to host it myself, being able to make sure I can keep eyes on things, that's really useful to me. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that we can do things like put it behind a VPN so I can restrict access. We have it behind our firewall. We also can do things like set up our own voice and chat servers so that, again, we can restrict who has access to chat and voice on our network. So in this video, I'll show you how to deploy Minecraft. We'll go through a Docker installation and the version I'm gonna use will support add-ons, which is pretty cool if you wanna create some more extensible play. And I'll also provide the files for Kubernetes for those of you who are now running a Kubernetes cluster. So let's have a quick review and then we'll dive straight into the deployment and I'll show you some steps to put some security into that. Now before you externalize any service to the internet, it's important that you understand the risks. Most of the time you're going to be okay because no one's really that interested in your home lab. But do note that there are automated bots out there that will constantly be scraping your servers, your IP address, etc. And if you don't have a firewall, you're probably going to be susceptible to some of those automated attacks. For that reason, I think it's important that you have a firewall in place, not just a port forward on your ISP router. Go and check out my videos if you haven't already on how to set up Sophos XG. But there's many others out there such as OpenSense, PFSense, Ubiquity. Take your pick. Main thing is just get one and make sure that you're protecting yourselves adequately. You can also go a step further and like I said, install a VPN to restrict access discreetly to those individuals that you want to have access to. It's a bit like Hamachi back in the day. So with that said, let's have a look at this deployment. So it's a pretty simplistic deployment and that's thanks to the It's G Minecraft server Docker image, which is awesome. In this guise, all we're doing is spinning up a Minecraft server with the Forge environment variable set. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, Forge is basically a mod add-on that allows you to put Forge mods onto Minecraft. So it will still look and feel exactly the same if you don't specify any add-ons, but it also gives you the flexibility to add them at a later date. And some of those things are great because they give you quality of life improvements, but also they can completely change the game if you're looking for something fresh on a new playthrough. So having a look through the image we've specified here, the ports 25565, that's the standard port for Minecraft. We're going to accept the end user license agreement, and then we're going to specify a bind mount. And this is where your data, i.e. things like your world and your saves and your preferences, are going to be stored. So in this case is the docker minecraft folder under my home directory. We specify stdin open which gives us an interactive terminal into the minecraft server so that we can run commands whilst we're on it. We complement this with a tty which creates an interactive shell so that we can run those commands. Next we just specify restart unless it's been stopped manually. And then this next part is optional, but if you remember in previous videos where I discussed about how you can improve the security of Cloudflare tunnels, we're gonna add a Mac VLAN to put this on our DMZ VLAN. Now, most people who just wanna spin this up will probably miss this step out, but I think it's important with respect to what I spoke about earlier, whereby we want to try and improve the security of our servers because this will be internet facing and we wanna minimize the impact of a successful attack. This is a game server after all, and probably security is not the highest on that list. And lastly, we specify that the Mac VLAN is external and true. So we wanna create this Mac VLAN first, and then we can give it an IP address. This IP address can then have specific rules on it within our firewall, and that can be used to further segment our network. 
So if you have a quick look at the documentation for this container, you'll see all of the different add-ons that are supported. And the beauty is all the Docker Compose files are there for you. So over on the GitHub page, you can see there's tons of different mod packs that are available. And if you go into one, so for example, let's have a look at Better MC. In here, you'll see there's a Docker Compose file and it will have in here the variable specified that you'll need to populate to get this up, but all the Docker Compose files are there. I, if it was me, would then just add some additional layers of security, such as putting it through the Mac VLAN and making sure that the firewall's in place. So let's jump straight into this and get this deployment up and running. So over on my Docker host, I've now copied over the Docker Compose file, and that's exactly the same as the file we looked at previously over in VS Studio. So now that we have that specified, we're pretty much ready to go. So it's the same old sudo docker compose up dash d. And once that's fired up, we'll go into the logs in Portainer and we'll have a look at this. Now this is quite a big deployment, so it's gonna take a bit of time to download. I did it earlier just so I can expedite this process, but now that it's started, let's go and check those logs. So over in Portainer, we can see the Minecraft server here. So let's click on the logs. And here we can see that it's downloading the Forge installer because if you remember, we specified the Forge environment variable. So it's gonna go off and download that first. And then once it's downloaded it, it will install it and then it will start creating our Minecraft world. Now, building the world can take some time depending on how much CPU and resources you've given it. It should spit out some errors in the logs if you're getting issues with CPU. It will say that it's throttling and it's behind. So if you do see that, consider giving it more CPU. Now, it was the case that Minecraft wasn't that well optimized for multi-threads. I think it's heavily dependent on single-threaded performance, which typically doesn't lend itself well to budget home lab servers. However, I've managed to run my server with about five or six concurrent players without any issue and I'm not running anything fancy. Mine's just a sixth gen Intel. So as you can see, six, seven years old now. So now on screen, it's preparing all of the spawn area and I'm gonna skip this part of the video to the end and I'll see you then. So now that's completed and we should be up and running. So if I hop into Minecraft now, I should be able to connect to this server. So let's give that a try. Now, I should have mentioned that this is for the Java edition of Minecraft, but there is also a Docker image for the Bedrock Edition, so you can play either. So if I now go to Multiplayer, you'll see at the bottom I've already created this Docker server. So if I click Play, hopefully we will log in, and voila, there we go, we're in and we're up and running on our own infrastructure. Congrats, you've got your own Minecraft server. So let's have a look in the logs, and here you can see, yep, yeah, Jimmy Bob joined and this is my IP address. So great, that all looks good. So you can now play Minecraft to your heart's content. But what if you want to externalize this? Well, you're gonna to need to do a port forward. Now I've demonstrated how to do that before, but I'll go through the process again quickly. The steps will be slightly different for each firewall vendor, but the process is pretty much the same. You're going to create a DNAT rule, a destination network address translation rule that routes the source IP from over the internet to the local server IP address. So I'm going to head over now into Sophos and get this up and running and then we should be able to connect to this server over the internet. So in Sophos I'm going to head over to rules and policies and then I'm going to click on NAT and I'm then gonna add a NAT, but it's gonna be a server access assistant. And again, there's that DNAT. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna select the IP host. Now, this is the host of your Docker machine. So I've now got the IP of my Docker VM specified here. And if you don't have anything in there, remember, go down to hosts and services here and just add an entry for this IP address. So I'm gonna click next. And then it's going to ask me to select my internet. So from this drop down, I'm going to select port B, which is my WAN interface, and then hit next. Now that we're on to the next step, we need to add the service. Now, if we remember, the service is this port here. So it expects to run on this port. You could change this, and whenever people connect to your server, they would have to specify the different port, but it uses this by default. So to make life easier, I'm going to keep it the same. So I'm gonna add a new item. And again, if you don't see the port you need in here, it's not there by default. 
you need to go to the hosts and services and add the port in. But I've already done this before, so I can type in Minecraft and there you can see 25, 565, UDP and TCP. So I'm gonna take that and hit apply and then I'm gonna click next. Now, this is where I can specify where I want people to connect from. So if you're kind of halfway between at the moment any, which means anyone in the world can connect to this, and the opposite side of that being restricting people heavily with the use of a VPN, you might want to go somewhere like adding region blocks. So you could remove any and then just put in United Kingdom, for example, and then only people with a UK IP address could access this server. Now I know, with the use of VPNs, it's a pretty weak control, but it can help against automated bot attacks. So it's worthwhile putting it anyway. So once we hit next, we're gonna get a summary of the rules. This all looks fine, so I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and hit next. So now that rule's being created, and with any luck, I can now connect to my server over the internet. So one thing that's really useful is you might want to go to your domain provider, so somebody like Cloudflare, and create a public record. So for example, minecraft.jimsgarage.co.uk and point it to your system. Now, typically things like games, they're not gonna like to go through a cloud proxy and Cloudflare will probably block that. And also you could go into something like your pie hole and you could create a record for minecraft.jimsgarage.co.uk or whatever your domain is so that you don't have to remember this IP every time. So to do that, I would just go into my pie hole. I would log in. Once I'm in pie hole, I would go down to create a record. So a DNS record. And then I could add in something like minecraft.jimsgarage.co.uk and then put the IP address of my Docker VM, which was 192.168.250. I'm gonna put Minecraft 2, just because I've already got a Minecraft server running. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to hit add. Now that that's added, I should be able to hop back into my Minecraft server and then add a server. And then in here, I can put minecraft 2jimsgarageco And hopefully that should now connect me without needing an IP address. Let's see if that's true. So it's automatically put it to the bottom. So let's click. And yeah, we're back in again. So brilliant, really simple, but a good quality of life improvement. So now that you have your server up and running, you're probably wondering, how do I back this up? Well, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because I've already covered my three, two, one backup strategy before. But because we're running this in Docker, we get all the benefits of that existing strategy. So if you wanna find out more about that, go and check out my Restic videos, and that will give you not only a backup of this container and the backups it does inside the container, it will also give you backups of this container over its lifetime. So if ever one of your save files or your worlds gets deleted within your server, you should hopefully be able to fall to a backup that you've got somewhere externally, say your NAS. So hopefully now you've got your Minecraft server set up and you've got complete control over your data and who has access to the server. And if you followed some of my recommendations about putting this behind a firewall, putting it on a separate network, having your backups configured, then you're a good way to having something that's reasonably secure and robust in the event of failure. And this level of security and controllability is really useful if you have dependents that you're concerned about what they're doing online or who has access to what they're accessing online. This will give you complete control over that. You can go into the Minecraft server settings and even restrict to different player accounts, etc. There's some documentation to do that easily on their website. And as I said, I'll be adding the Kubernetes files for this as well. So if you really care about your Minecraft being available, this will be the way to go. And so you can see here, I've got this deployed and up and running. And if I hop back into my Minecraft, you can see that at the top here, this is my Minecraft server. I click that and log in. And here's the one that my son's been playing for a while, hosted within Kubernetes, with all of the benefits that Kubernetes gives you. So there we go, a little bit lighthearted for my channel, but there's nothing wrong with that. So if you like this video, I can tell you how to spin up some more if that's something you're interested in. So hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.